Welcome, friends. Today, we'll be testing out compressors. You see, uh, compressors tend to be one of the most expensive parts in the air conditioning equipment, so it is important that we diagnose these correctly. Okay, so this is a closer lookup of the compressor, and you have three pins. Now, normally, you have this plug that goes in the back, and the back actually tells you which one is my run, my common, and my start. Um, now, you might see one-phase or three-phase compressors. Uh, this one specifically is a one-phase, and it tells you right here. But how do we check these? How do we know that the windings are working correctly? How do we know that when we power this up, the compressor is going to turn on? Okay, so before we check the compressor with a meter, it is important to understand what a PSC motor is, which is what a compressor, a one-phase compressor is a permanent split capacitor motor. Uh, so here you have the compressor motor. And if you've noticed, um, between start and common and between run and common, which one has more resistance? The start and common do. And I tried to draw it in, in such a way where I drew more lines. There's more resistance. So when you check this, it's going to have a higher ohm. But essentially, this is all you have inside of the compressor. You have two windings. You have the auxiliary start winding, and you also have the main run winding. But as I had said, the start winding has more resistance. And essentially, you have two coils inside of the compressor, kind of somewhat uh, aligned like this. So your start winding has more resistance, and your run winding has a lot less but they share the common together. They share the common, as you can see. And one of your lines of power goes to the common. So then your other line goes to the run winding, and then the other line comes from your herm, from your capacitor to here. So it's kind of, the current's kind of going here, boom, hitting the run winding, and then it goes here, boom, 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 causing the compressor to pump. Now, when checking, an ohming out a compressor, this is what you're looking for. Uh, between run and start, that is your highest ohms. And, and that makes sense because when you're checking, which we're going to do in a bit, uh, when we're checking ohms, you're checking what is between run and common and common to start. You're reading all this. So that's going to give you the highest resistance. The middle one is start to common, and that makes sense because the Auxiliary, their start winding has more resistance than the run winding. And the lowest resistance, lowest ohms, is going to be run to common. Okay, so now let's go ahead and ohm out the compressor. Uh, I went to my meter, went to ohms, the little horseshoe, and I got my three pins here. So what I did essentially, I just basically put these pins on the whiteboard. The top one is this one here. The one on the right is the right one. The one on the bottom is this bottom one right there. So let's go ahead and ohm it out. Let's go ahead and do, um, let's do the bottom, these, these two right here. And we are getting a, we just gotta be patient with it. Uh, we, got, we are getting 2.9, they're fluctuating between 2.9 and 3.0. So we'll put three. It was closer to three, so we'll put three. 3.0. Let's check the top two now. These here. And you can see it there on your bottom right. You can see the ohm reading. We're getting 1.7. Let's check it again. And sometimes it fluctuates like that. You got to make sure you're grabbing or actually touching the pins. But there we go. 1.68. We'll put 1.7. It's easy to accidentally touch the metal or touch the other pin, but you want to make sure you're only touching two pins at a time. And that one I'm reading 1. Point, give it a second, 1.3. All right, so that is what we got. And so that tells me we have a, a healthy compressor. Well, there's still another test that we have to do, but uh, this is one step here. And, you know, when you look at it, that makes that makes sense because the highest 
on reading. It's going to be your run to start. So right away we can say, okay, this is going to be run to start. Because according to the previous slide, the highest on reading is run to start. But I don't know if this is run or that's run or this is start or that start. But I do know that between run and common, that is my lowest reading. So right away I can say, you know what, that's going to be my run. Because between run and common is my lowest ohm reading. And then between run to start is my highest ohm reading. And between start to common is my middle ohm reading. So yes, these two will add up between the common to start and run to common will add up to my run to start. Now, even if you're off by like 0.1, it's not the end of the world. In my experience, the compressor will still turn on but it should be close to the total ohms, the total resistance between run and start. Okay, so the other test we wanna do is to make sure the compressor is not grounded. So we're gonna go ahead and put it on, on ohms, the horseshoe, and simply you're gonna go to, with one lead, you're gonna go to one of the pins, scratch a little bit of the paint here, cause you wanna actually get the outer shell of the compressor, not the actual paint. So Put it on one of the pins, put it where I scratched a little bit of the paint off, and you should get open line. And you're going to check every pin to the outer shell. And then just to confirm, I go ahead and touch it to the actual copper piping here. One lead to one pin, to the other one, and the other one. It needs to be open line because you want all that current to go to the windings. If if the coils inside of the windings are touching the outer shell and it's grounded, um, you're going to pull a lot of current. You can't do any work with the outer shell. It needs to go only through the coils. And usually a grounded compressor will trip your breaker or blow up a fuse. So um, in this one here, you'll see what an example of a grounded compressor is. Um, you know, when checking all leads, um, you might not get from one lead um, to the actual outer shell. Um, ohms, but when you check one of the pins here, you see I'm gonna check that one. See, I am getting, I am getting a reading. It's not open line, and even to the uh, copper piping that you see right here coming out, I'm gonna check it here and I'm gonna confirm, and I'm getting a reading. You see, so this compressor is grounded. It's not good. Uh, something else you will find on a compressor is behind the common, which is this is your common pin, behind that you have this little thermal overload switch in series, meaning that right behind that you have, you can think about it this way, you have this wire behind this pin, and then this one goes to my two coils. So when compressors are hot to the touch because they're low on refrigerant, Remember, we need refrigerant to cool the, the windings, but when it's low on refrigerant, these compressors get hot to the touch. Uh, guess what happens to this thermal overload switch? It opens. Basically, there's no path for that current to go through because it is open. It is an open switch. So um, once it cools down, it closes. Uh, but just have that, have that in mind when you're testing it because you might go to a job without even touching the compressor you might just check it and you're like, well, why am I getting open line from, uh, from the run to the common and from the start to the common, I'm getting open line. With, between these two, I'm getting a reading, but from the run to common, start to common, it's open line. It's because this thermal overload switch is open. And you can just confirm that by uh, simply touching the compressor. If it's hot to the touch, then the thermal overload will most likely be open and you'll get an open line between the run and start to the common. Another example of a bad compressor is, um, you know, when you check the pins, both the common and run and common and start should add up to your run and start. If it doesn't or it's way off, then you know it's not a good compressor. So when checking this one, you see, I'm checking these two pins. I'm getting a 1.8. But then when I check these two, 15.12, and then these two here, 13.13, .13, it's way off. 
So something's going on with the windings. So this is a bad compressor. Now what about when you go to a compressor, like this one here, and you're checking all the windings, one pin to the other, right? I'm reading here 0 0.8 to 6. Here I'm reading 0 0.8 to 6. And here I'm, I'm reading 0 0.86. Is, it, is this a bad compressor? No, it's not. This is a three-phase compressor. The three compressors we just to check, these are all one phase. But a three-phase compressor will give you the same ohm reading from all the pins to from one pin to the to each other. They will give you the same resistance. So don't get confused with the three three-phase compressors. They're they're a little bit different when it comes to the one phase, but essentially you're doing the same test. You're checking that you're getting the same ohm reading from one pin to the other for a three phase. You're also making sure it's not grounded. And, and that's it. This is how you check compressors. So as, as you can see, this is something that with a little bit of knowledge and using a meter, you can find out if a compressor is good or not.